I first came to Leicester in 1992, 21 years ago, to run what was called the City Challenge Regeneration Programme in the West End. And that's when I first met Richard, because I was delighted to find out he was honorary president of the company that had been created to deliver this regeneration. He was certainly not just a name. And he spent more time than any of us realised. Because of his Leicester roots, a lot of people talked to him. And in the early days, not everybody was happy of the city, about the City Challenge concept. So we realised that people had been earwigging him, you know, and saying they wanted changes. And um, he was very hands-on in that sense. And when he came on visits, he just inspired people. Um, I shall never forget him coming January 98 in particular, because that was a day when he spent the whole day visiting projects in City Challenge. And the children, it was just like waving a magic wand, you know, or Pipe Piper. They just flocked to him, they responded to him. It was almost, as I say, like magic. But it wasn't just the children, it was projects who were inspired by him. I mean, we did our best and we thought we were inspiring people. But he just has that touch. And the best tribute I can pay to him in that respect is we had a government survey. They always do these things afterwards to say, has this thing worked, you know? And they do a cold, critical analysis in statistical terms of what's been achieved. And the guy who did that said to us quite spontaneously, what an influence Richard Attenborough had, had that he picked up. You know, he wasn't talking statistics now. He said he went around projects and people, ordinary men and women involved in these projects, some in quite a lowly capacity, had said, that was the guy that inspired me and made me feel I was making a key contribution to the whole. That's quite an achievement, isn't it? The Richard Attenborough Centre for Disability in the Arts, now called Embrace Arts, as you know, um, was built on land which uh, the university, although it's located now in the university campus, in those days the university did not own that land. So one of the things we said we'd do for Richard was to make a contribution to the purchase of the site that he could build his centre on. I can't remember the figure now, I'm sorry to say, but it was a significant contribution. But the next time he came for a meeting with us, Peter Soulsby and myself, Peter Soulsby, the current mayor, was then the chairman of City Town. And um, he said, um, I'm so grateful for the contribution you've made. You know, I really do appreciate it. And then he did that little smile that only Attenborough can do, and he said, um, I hope I'm not being rude if I say, you can imagine when I send the brochure out to potential donors asking for funds for the centre, it would be so much easier for me if I could say City Challenge bought the site rather than made a significant contribution to it. <laughs> and we had our budgetary limits, you know, and we'd given what we thought was the max. But we then... Uh, we found a way and we did it. And he, he was pleased. And he then sat, sent out his brochure asking for donations. And um, when the centre opened, uh, Princess Diana opened it, uh, 27th of May, 97. And uh, he managed that Peter and I could have a chat with her, you know. And just before she was leaving, I told her this story that I've just told you. And she said, she burst out laughing and she said, Nobody, nobody says no to Dickie. And I was talking to a relative of mine in Yorkshire just on the phone about it yesterday. She's tremendous problems with her eyes and she's wanting to paint on silk. And I said, if only you lived in Leicester, you'd get that sort of help at the Embrace Arts Centre. She couldn't believe it. It's a unique centre. And I think that in itself is a tremendous legacy. The other legacy, of course, as you probably know, is a wonderful Picasso Ceramics collection that he and Sheila generously gave to the city. So those are two concrete examples. But the biggest thing, I think, is what I was talking to you about before, I would say, you know, inspiration, 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 is what is... He loved the city, as his brother David does, 
They've both been good patrons and done things for the city. And it's inspired so many people. Um, amazing, given that his career has taken him all over the world with contracts doing films that have taken him away for months. But yet he made time, somehow for us as patron, and came to Leicester and talked, as I said to you, for, with ordinary people doing projects and made them feel they were making a key contribution to the future progress of the city. And that's a real legacy, isn't it? Well, the other thing was, bless him, he agreed. Uh, I moved on from City Challenge to create the Space Centre, the National Space Centre. And the first film we were producing to be shown in the planetarium or space theatre was called Big. You know, how big the universe. And um, everybody thought, if only Richard could do that. And bless him, he was willing to let me persuade him to do it. And a couple of colleagues and I went down to Twickenham to the studios there. And again, I just marvelled, really. Um, he, was, he had a script agreed with the creator of the film in, in the Space Centre. But he'd no vision there, you know, there was no cameras, no nothing. It was just recording, right? And yet he got across this tremendous concept of big, you know, how that you get to the edge of the universe with a telescope, you think you've reached the end, and then somebody gets a better telescope and you see more. And his voice was just right for that film. And as I say, it was the opening film and one of the very best that's ever been used there. And months later, he came to see the end result and how his voice had been blended in with what he hadn't seen before. But he, he got that... Uh, people said he sounded like God, you know, in a way. <laughs> he was talking about the vastness of the universe and the um, multiplicity, obviously, of the stars and the planets and so on. And it just came across in that wonderful way. As my children loved um, Miracle of 34th Street, and... Uh, there were two reasons they loved that brilliant film, obviously, but Richard kindly wrote some very warm remarks to them personally on their copy of the video. But um, when I think of all these films, I treasure two that are probably less well known. I think Shadowlands and Grey Owl. And that's because, to me, his, his artistic brilliance as a director came across in every film he directed. But... With something like Shadowlands, it seemed to me, for instance, he got right to the heart of human feelings and understood how people felt when they were under pressure and tragedy and one thing or another. And he got that across in, in almost in a non-dramatic way. It sounds a stupid thing to say, but you know what I mean? In such a natural way. I thought it was a very powerful film. And then Growl. Uh, never seemed to really make the big time and the headlines, but to me, a tremendous film. And when he came and presented it in Leicester at the um, Odeon in the um, Freeman's Common, he said in his opening remarks that uh, he had heroes, you know, Richard himself had heroes, and these were people who made a difference to the human condition. And I think that comes up so much to his work that he was inspired about the deepest feelings of mankind, womankind at their best. And not only was technically brilliant, but had that almost unique capacity, I'm not saying unique, of getting that across to ordinary people in a film. Very powerful.